Well, I'm going to keep this brief. Try to keep you can it under. You take your 10 minutes. I don't think I need it. All right. What, what we really want to communicate from the risk working group is that a lot of times in chaos, we have a problem, we understand it, we know of a range of contained solutions, and we go about building metrics and developing tools for those metrics to reach those solutions. When we started into the dependencies world, it was a lot like the La Brea tar pits. Or how many people have thought, I just want to stream something on the internet. I want to stream a show. And first you have to figure out what channel it's on and what all the channels are. And you end up finding this giant array of channels. Well, we had a similar experience with the risk working group, where when it comes to understanding dependencies, the OSSF, the Linux Foundation, there are a lot of different projects doing many different things from different perspectives to understand software dependencies. And there wasn't one way, and getting our heads around exactly what the problem we were trying to solve was, was a big part of our process. And that hasn't been my experience in other chaos metrics working groups that I've participated in before. And Sophia Vargas, who's here, played a key role along with Kate Stewart, Dwayne O'Brien, David Wheeler, and the other people named back on this slide, and just really sifting through this very complex array of tools. And we ended up with these themes. We want to understand if our project is secure, if it's safe, and how do we measure dependencies? That was the big one, because there are a lot of tools out there that measure different dimensions of dependency. And the biggest thing not being looked at is how can I use, can I use some dependency that's fundamentally unsafe if I can build something trustworthy around it? And how do I handle it if a lot of my application's functionality actually derives itself from dependencies? also designing so that a mistake isn't the end of the world, and then ultimately measure dependencies. And the dependency problem looks like this classic XKCD model, where there's some random project from a person in Nebraska. I want to point out that XKCD is calling out Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> Go but Nebraska. Been maintaining this since 2003. And in general, this is, a, this is a list of the categories of risk that we look at. And so dependencies is just one dimension of the risk working group's way of looking at things. To give you an idea of the array of things that we looked at, talked about, went through to understand dependencies, each of these links, which are available in the slides, is, is one way of approaching dependency risk in open source software. And so we sifted through all of those and came back to these questions to define, you know, what are the indicators of dependency risk? How can we quantify them? What can we measure? Does time matter? In some cases it does, sometimes it doesn't. And what's the value of any particular dependency metric? Oops. And so we used the goal question metric process that has been essential in the chaos project to define two metrics so far. One is upstream dependencies for my software, and the other is live years. And so in the case of live year, I'll just use this brief example, our goal is understanding the scope of dependencies in a project, so, and then identifying the higher level dependencies. And then the question is, what is the age of the project dependencies compared to the current stable release? I will not go through the detailed description, but you can think of it this way. You can look at it at a project level and understand how out of date each individual dependency is. You can also look at it at an OSPO level and say, how, what's the total number of lib years a particular project is out of date? And across all of those projects, which, which dependencies are most important? Say I have 11,000 projects in my OSPO, which are the dependencies that are at high, that place me at the highest risk? So you can use Libier to get a coarse grain view. So instead of looking deeply into 11,000 projects, you can focus intently on the 50 or 500 dependencies that pose the most significant risk for you at this time. This is just another picture of all the different ways that we looked at risk from the perspective of people and the tribal knowledge that exists within projects, the money that exists to invest, 
how maintained is the project? Is somebody keeping track of your dependencies? I know we're writing code fixing bugs, but you still have import statements and, and libraries that you're using. Who's checking to make sure that that's happening? Test coverage is obviously important. Uh, fit for purpose. So a medical device has a much more stringent set of controls on it, perhaps, than a website. And then are there any export restrictions? Obviously, there, there's a list of countries we can't use dependencies from. And at the end of the day, um, thanks in, in large measure to Sophia's um, driving us towards a goal. Okay, so what can we measure? We sorted through all this stuff, and we came up with a list of what we call our minimum viable metrics. And, um, and so it's just listing all of the dependencies that exist in your project. And we can use other chaos metrics. When we identify the 50 oldest ones, perhaps, we can then use other chaos metrics to assess the health and sustainability of those projects that we're dependent on. And how many times is a dependency referenced in a particular ecosystem? I mentioned that under Libier, but there are other metrics that we're going to develop specifically for that. Libier's, which is developed, <clears throat> vulnerabilities downstream. Uh, so are we causing other people problems by being out of date on something? Um, and we're al also implementations of OSF scorecard, and then a matrix of known vulnerabilities. So the, the piece that sort of intersects with security and dependencies is vulnerabilities database and known software vulnerabilities. And so that's sort of an orthogonal cross piece that we can, we can um, build a metric around. These are our questions. Thank you. Sophia, you have five minutes so, if you that, want. Sophia, do you have anything that you would want to add? Uh, sure. Um, should I get closer to the mic? You, yeah. you can. I could yeah. talk loudly, but I want to think about the live stream. Um, Good idea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think if, I feel like you mentioned kind of this up front in terms of figuring out the swamp. Yeah. Um, we're still kind of in constant discussions with that because I think the biggest issue that we're facing right now is that there's definitely a data we have versus data we want problem, especially in the space of dependencies where a lot of things we're focusing on focus on package managers because that's the data that we have available to us where in reality when we're talking about dependencies, it could be anywhere from infrastructure to people to financing to a broader interpretation of how you might even define a dependency. So I think for sort of the next level out in terms of how we're going to explore metrics and continue to develop this is thinking not just about what we can actually measure, which is what we focused on initially, but in a perfect world, what we should be measuring to actually make this more of a, a meaningful a meaningful evaluation. So there's a quick tidbit, but then we can go to questions. And I don't think we, we were told we don't have time for questions. Yeah, you have time. Oh, okay. Who, where were the questions? I see one in the back. So this live year, um, that's a very fascinating metric. Um, the way I hear it, it seems to assume that the older the dependency, the riskier it is. So How we do you map that, though, onto this idea that there are some things that are done and, uh, and don't need to be, and, and by design aren't Okay, uh, sure, I mean, I'll, I'll add it and then Sean can add. Um, so the question is around the the time duration of lib years and whether or not older things are actually, should be considered more or less risky. Um, Sean has actually been talking to a few folks that have implemented this metric in slightly different ways because of that ambiguity, um, where we were initially debating between yeah. just overall age versus age of last stable release, which doesn't necessarily mean the most current. <laughs> and essentially acknowledging if, if there's a better way to track what, what is actually still a stable and secure release versus just the time. So it's definitely an approximate, and we've seen a few different approaches to try to make it more aligned to how that individual organization evaluated risk in their own context. Uh, did you want to add yeah. anything to that? Yeah, just that the, the metric specifically states the most stable release, so you go backwards from there, and if you're at the most stable release, at the current, the most recent stable release, and so technically the way the metric operates is the whatever the most recent stable release is, and if that was 30 years ago, 
that's that's your that's your and if you're that doesn't appear that's where you're at it's a Libya of zero yeah I mean I think the the side comment here too is another element of discussion in our, our working group is what is the best sort of the easier ways to bring in more context around say weighting sorting and evaluation so we can enumerate everything but we do, do we know what's more or less important has more or less impacts more or less ability to address um, and other things that might actually factor into someone's individual risk assessment um, and so I guess that's sort of that question of the data we wish we had uh, and expanding it on because I think just enumerating a set of dependencies is a great starting place but it can often be very overwhelming and unclear what actually has the biggest potential impact to take down my system tool app or whatever it is so I'd just like to point out real quick that the, the live your metric is part of the next release, which means there is a public comment period right now. So if, if you wanted to comment on the next release. Which ends today, I think. <laughs> 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 oh, no. just a uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna reiterate that on the live stream. Uh, Kevin in the back just mentioned that this metric is still up for review. So if you have comments, please let us know. It's in Slack too. It's in Slack. Okay, great. And also, like maybe announce when your meeting is. Every other Thursday. I yeah. think it was supposed to be now. So yeah, every other, every other Thursday at two p.m. I think. Yeah. Hey, we met now. Yeah. We yeah. Okay. We're <laughs> two p.m. Central Time. Actually, yeah, we're right we in the middle of the risk meeting now. as we speak. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. No, well, again. thank you very much. Yeah.